Wait, before you go anywhere, if you like mysterious, true crime, or paranormal stories, you're in the right place. So make sure to relax. You can hit subscribe and that like button if you want. But I got a great story for you guys today. So thank you for coming or coming back to this channel. I really appreciate it. Now, I had to find something special for y'all because usually I post Friday. I wanted to try the Saturday out for the second time. It's just an experiment. We'll be back to Friday by next week. If you get 45 likes on this video, then you will get a bonus episode during this week. And that is a promise. Also, make sure to find the hidden clue that will be hidden through somewhere. Put the timestamp and what it is in the comments and you will be entered into the giveaway. So without any further ado, as of now, it's time to slip into a mind that's not our own. Let's go. Todd Sees was a 39-year-old Little League baseball coach and a father of two. And in many ways, he was just a regular guy. His disappearance, however, was anything but regular. On August 2nd, 2002, Todd Sees was living at the base of Montour Ridge, which was a mountain near the town of Northumberland in the southern part of Northumberland County, which is in Pennsylvania. Todd's home is nestled in a heavily wooded area not far from the Susquehanna River. And the weather was good that morning, so at 5 a.m. he puts on his hunting gear, he goes out, and he sits on his quad bike. And then he races off looking for preseason deer. Now around that time, Todd told his wife he'll be back at noon. And his wife said, okay, have fun, I hope you have a great day. So Todd leaves. But then noon rolls around and Todd is nowhere to be seen. So his wife is just, she's gonna wait a little bit longer, but she waits until 2 p.m. And that's when her anxiety was really starting to kick in. So she couldn't wait anymore. Feeling something is off, she calls the police. And it wasn't just the wife that was concerned because when she called the police, they immediately acknowledged this out of character behavior and a giant search party was quickly formed. Local and state police, paramedics, and local volunteers all there to help with the search. The number of local volunteers involved soon grew over 200, which goes to show how popular Todd was and how everybody knew him as a really good guy. Now, after a short search, two miles from his home, his son Nick finds Todd's quad bike. Something like this would normally be a big break in the search, but when tracking dogs are brought to the scene, they fail to get any scent. So since the dogs could not get any scent, they sent Mr. E Files out there to see if he could catch a whiff of something that's going on. He told all the volunteers they are on the right track. To continue, they must. They all thanked him for his honesty, and I told them to subscribe to my channel because in the future, I will tell your story. Now, I got back in my spaceship and left. So at this point, searchers are baffled. After the search of the surrounding woodlands turns up nothing, divers are sent into the pond close to Todd's property, and their search resulted in nothing as well. So the search of the woodlands continued on through this intense summer heat. Then on the evening of the second day, something is spotted in an area of dense scrub about 30 yards away from a pond. And it is to note that it is two miles from where the quad bike was found. So firefighters have to hack their way a path through the trees and the deep brush. And as they get closer, it becomes clear and clear that the shape spotted in the trees is indeed the shape of a body. The worst fears of this search party had just been realized. It is the dead body of 39 year old Todd Seeds. His clothes are missing and Todd is dressed only in his underwear. The clothes he wore the previous morning are nowhere to be seen. Now, despite being missing for less than two days, his body is withered and abnormally thin and weak. And one of the scariest and craziest parts about all of this is the expression on his face was one of horror and immense fear. 
but the weirdness here is just beginning. Within 30 minutes of Todd's discovery, the FBI are not called, they're on the scene. They waste no time in taking over the investigation. And they will not let Todd's wife see the body. And even worse, she is told that she will have to wait six to eight weeks to get his body back while they wait for results of a toxicology report. I mean, I don't know about you, but imagine if this happened to your husband or somebody that you loved and they just say, nope, you can't see them, you gotta wait two months. Imagine the anger you would feel, not to mention why. Why is all of this happening? Then more searching revealed a boot, one mile from the quad bike, and it is Todd's. It is found 75 feet up a tree. Aside from the look of terror on Todd's face, there are no visible signs of struggle, no bruises, no wounds. The only visible marks are small scratches from the brush. So at this point, everybody is confused and two separate autopsies are done. And the two separate autopsies return nothing. Yes, the toxicology reports return nothing. The cause of Todd's death is a mystery. So what happened to Todd C's? Well, the quad bike found two miles from his home. No sense around the vehicle for tracking that dogs could follow. His body found in an area of scrub so dense that the firefighters literally needed to hack their way inside. Plus, Todd's body dressed only in his underwear. Not to mention a boot, his boot, found a mile from the quad bike in a tree. The worst part is that unforgettable look of terror on his face. Now, in the days after Todd was found, it was noted by locals that there was a heavy presence of military helicopters. How many stories now have I told where people have been found without their clothes on? I mean, something is truly going on. Even if we think about it logically, he had not even a bruise on him, yet his boot was like a mile away up in the trees, so it's almost like something lifted him off the ground and then put him back down later. Again, that could just be the conspiracy theorist inside of me speaking. Let me know in the comments what you think happened. But upon the arrival of the military helicopters, the FBI interviewed people in the surrounding area, and there were no reports or sightings of Todd, but a nearby farm worker spotted seeing something on the morning of Todd's disappearance. I'll wait for this. His account, they say, is bizarre, and it is in the general area of where Todd went missing. The farm worker spotted a disc that hovered above the tree line for approximately 10 to 15 minutes. In his words, it rose, then stopped, then shone a beam of light down. Okay, if this guy is right, then I hate to say I told you so, but lately I'd say within the last 20 years, it seems like the conspiracy theory people are the people that usually get it correct. Like this video if you agree. But the man continued that something was pulled into that beam of light and when the object was suspended within the beam, it had risen onto the bottom of the craft and then the light vanished. The worker was convinced that the object suspended in the beam of light was a man. Then the disc went west, stopped again before shooting upwards at an incredible rate, disappearing out of sight. And the farmer that said for 12 hours after the incident, horses on his farm were agitated and nervous. Which brings me to a side note. You guys should watch the show that's going on right now and it's called Skinwalker Ranch because the cows and animals act very strange whenever these UFOs are nearby or seen. And this farmer's story might be too easy to dismiss if not for one thing. Three men were also out fishing on the nearby Susquehanna River on the morning that Todd vanished and they came back from their trip with a story that they were sure nobody would believe. Hmm? They were wrong. So if you say this all sounds too bizarre to be true, but consider this, no family member, friend, or associate was asked to provide a positive identification on the body at any point. What? The body was removed from the scene of death without a coroner present, going against county law. And you wanna talk about a twist? You see, officially, Todd's death was ruled as cocaine toxicity. I know, it makes 
absolutely no sense. But in a final twist, when Todd's body was returned to them, the family were told not to open the casket. In all likelihood, the truth about what happened to Todd C's died with him wherever that was. And if you like this story, then please hit the like button right now and make sure you're subscribed with all of your notifications on. That's it for me for today, and I will see you guys next Friday, but if you get this up to 45 likes, you will get a bonus video. Cheers.